Hey guys, Mr. Dobermans here. This video is going to show you how to remove and install cutters in our spindle. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is move the gantry and the spindle to a position. I like to use the front right of our CNC machine so you can access the spindle and the collet. Then you're going to need to move your C, your Z up, take off the lower dust boot, which is a held on by magnets, and set that aside. Now we can see the cutter bit, the end mill, whatever we have in there. We can see the collet nut, and then there's a collet insert inside this. We can also see the arbor, which is the part of the spindle that spins and we have access to. I'm gonna take my two wrenches, and as you can see here, the two wrenches are different size. One is 13 millimeter, one is 17 millimeter. Now the smaller of the two wrenches holds the arbor on the two little flats there. The larger one goes on the collet nut, and to loosen, I actually turn these away from each other. Now I can do that a few times, give myself some space, and it actually becomes hand tight. Usually there's a second tight spot, which once I loosen it from there, I can remove the bit. Sometimes the bit will fall. I actually have a small box that I can put underneath it if I'm worried about damaging it. You have to be really, really careful touching the end mill because it is very, very sharp. It cuts very well, and so it is extremely sharp, and it's sharp on the side, unlike a drill bit. Okay, so if I just gently wiggle that and be very careful with it, I can see this is my um, end mill, my cutter, whatever we wanna call it. These flutes and teeth are very sharp. You can feel them, they feel like knives. Um, so if you want to use one of the gloves, there's a leather glove in here you can use to make sure that you don't cut yourself. But if you're just really gentle with this, you should be okay. So that's how we take it out. Now I want to take the collet off to show you exactly what it looks like. It will eventually screw off and there's two parts to the collet. There is this uh, outside bit with the hex nut and then there is the inside part. And if I kind of push and pull, I can disconnect the two and they kind of snap back together too. So here's the two pieces of my collet. This is the part that holds the bit and this is the part that tightens it against the arbor. Now what's critical is that you choose a collet that is the appropriate size for the shank or the smooth part of your cutting bit. Now we're gonna use mostly one quarter or six millimeter uh, diameter cutting bits. So a uh, six millimeter or one quarter should suffice. It's ideal if you can, um, and it says in very, very small text here what kind this is. This is a six millimeter because this is a six millimeter bit. Ideally, you will use the, the correct size one, uh, but we can use a slightly larger one and it would be okay. All right, now to reinsert this, I just kind of push it with my thumb and it snaps in there and now it won't fall out. It moves freely, this is ready to install. I like to screw this on about halfway before I insert the cutter bit, my end mill. Now obviously I'm being very, very careful with this. I'm not holding it very tight. It should slide and if we're lucky, it's gonna hold it with, with a little bit of tension as well. If there's not enough tension to hold it, you can tighten it up slightly, uh, but you still wanna be able to move this up and down. Now, if we bottom this out, um, it's actually not gonna let us tighten it appropriately, and we're either gonna break this or have some problems with it spinning in the collet. So one surefire way is to bottom it out and then bring it back down. But one thing you need to be aware of is the collet is really bad at holding um, the flutes or where the teeth are. Ideally, you only want to hold the smooth part of this. There's about three quarters of an inch of smoothness here, which is just about the minimum that I need for my collet to hold it tight. So that's what I'm going to do. Right when this starts um, getting into the machined or cut areas is where I'm going to put the collet. So I'm gonna put it right about there. And then I'm just gonna watch it and make sure it doesn't drop out as I'm tightening the collet. But I use the same two wrenches and it's basically a reverse technique of how I put it on. 
So instead of going with uh, pushing the wrenches away from each other, I'm gonna push them towards each other. And one important thing is to not make it too tight. These wrenches are short on purpose. I don't wanna be He-Man. I don't wanna over tighten and risk breaking these parts or cross threading. What I'm looking for is a tight tension where I have to put a little bit of muscle into it, but I don't wanna, like I said, He-Man, be Mr. Gladiator. Uh, Cause what that's gonna do is it's going to wear out parts prematurely. It's gonna break things and nobody wants that. That is how you install the cutter. Now, sometimes if you're not sure about it, you can give it just a slight wiggle. Never ever grab this with any sort of strength because those cutters are so sharp, they could cut right in you. This is a good time too, to use the leather glove we have available and just give it a little wiggle. We just wanna make sure that the collet has a good grab and it's not gonna move because that could cause problems when we actually start cutting. So that's how you remove our cutting bit and install a cutting bit.